The World Health Organization naming the new COVID variant with the Greek letter Omicron, but skipping over the Greek letters Nu and she. Yeah, the organization says Nu is too easily confused with Nu, and she is a common Chinese last name. Now, spokeswoman Carla Drysdale telling us why in an email saying, quote, WHO's best practices for naming disease suggest avoiding causing offense to any cultural, social, national, regional, professional, or ethnic groups. And let's bring in our panel to discuss GOP strategist and former Nevada State GOP chair Amy Tarkarian, also Newsmax contributor Tom Borelli, and conservative political analyst Jackie Jordan. Uh, Amy, let's start with you. Newsmax is learning that she is not a common name in China, not even among the top 100 surnames. So do you think the organization is trying not to offend Chinese, offend Chinese President Xi? 100 percent. They're not just trying not to. They're just avoiding it at all costs. That is exactly who they answer to in the end. Otherwise, coronavirus or COVID-19 would have been called the Wuhan virus, just like what former President Trump would call it, or the China virus. Uh, they are avoiding this at all costs. And the fact that, you know, we still even nickname it the coronavirus. Maybe, maybe people who drink beer or maybe people who work for the corona company would find that offensive. Maybe uh, certain cultures uh, who celebrate using corona would find that offensive. There's so many different explanations for why you may want to use a name or not use a name, but this is just a full-blown lie, and everybody knows it. Uh, Tom Borelli, I'll get you to weigh in on that as well. And if we remember before this, and this is all new for all of us, we've all been going through this together. We used to call it the UK strain, uh, the, the various strains that come from where uh, it, it, the virus uh, derived from, MERS, right? Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Um, we've changed it to Greek letters to stay away from any offenses, and now we're doing it even with the letters. Your take. Well, Sean, the last thing we need in is a pandemic is a politically correct uh, World Health Organization. But the fact of the matter is the World Health Organization has been wrong on the science and in policy, primarily because they're China's puppet. Way back in January 2020, the WHO promoted China's lie that the virus was not transmittable between people. WHO also opposed the Trump-China travel ban, and in this year, WHO worked with China on a report. They assembled scientists to try to figure out the origins, origins of SARS-CoV-2. And you will be surprised, being sarcastic, that they said it was extremely unlikely that the virus came from a lab leak. And even today, WHO is opposing the African travel ban. The worst thing we need is a politically correct WHO. That's why former President Trump pulled the funding because they are toting China's line. They're propagandists for China, not for science or world health. Yeah, Jackie, to Tom's point, I mean, the WHO, they've made some decisions and statements that a lot of people have questioned over this time of COVID. Yes. Well, I feel like from a media narrative, oh, we're going to we're going to replay the same uh, trick upon the trick again that we just experienced over the last a couple, a last 18 months to two years, which has uh, created a lot more damage in terms of mental health and suicide than the actual virus itself ever uh, contributed to. The vaccines, of course, are, you know, debatable from a lot of perspectives. And the word Omicron also has, uh, when you, sp you know, spell, you want to play spell words with it, spells out the word moronic. And also it has the, um, in Wikipedia, just not that that's a source of complete information, but on Comer, which is a micro RNA that is associated with cancer. So it's a very interesting word choice that they ended up with by avoiding offending um, the uh, China. And final thoughts from uh, Amy Tarkanian on this one. Also, remember the tweets, xenophobic, if you put the travel ban in place from, uh, from then uh, candidate Biden, now President Biden, yet uh, he's doing the same. Any hypocrisy in that? Well, yes, of course. And, they, and we are now dealing with a White House administration that is filled with control freaks. And, of course, I think it was smart of President Trump to implement the ban when it was necessary until we were able to get more information and feel more at ease with, with people traveling in and out from certain areas. Just as I think 
it would be wise and prudent for President Biden, just as he's going to be talking to us later on today, to be putting on a temporary ban. This is just common sense until you can figure things out, because one of your roles as a leader and as a commander in chief is to make sure that your citizens are safe. All right. Great discussion. Amy Tarkarian, Tom Brelli, Jackie Jordan, stand by. CNN causing major outrage on social media over a tweet saying Waukesha will hold a moment of silence today, marking one week since a car drove through a city Christmas parade, killing six people and injuring scores of others. Yeah, I mean, just check it out on your screen and read this. If you haven't checked it out yet, the, the car uh, allegedly mm. killed these six people, according to CNN's Twitter. Multiple users were quick, quick to point out the news outlet suggested it was only a car responsible for the deadly attack and not the criminal behind the wheel, which has been charged, by the way, with this. I uh, will bring in our panelists, Amy Tarkani and Tom Borelli, Jackie Jordan. Tom, uh, my goodness, uh, what, what do you make of this? You know uh, Daryl Brooks charge intentional homicide, five counts. They may throw more at him now that you've seen, uh, uh, sadly, a nine-year-old succumb to his, uh, to, to, to his injuries. Um, and still, it's reported as a car uh, killing these people from CNN. A lot of people upset. Well, Sean, they, they should be. The whole nation should be outraged because, once again, we have the left-wing media playing judge and jury. Obviously, uh, Mr. Brooks is being charged with the crime, and he will go to trial and if found guilty. He should go to jail forever if found guilty. But the media and Democrat politicians have been on... They've had the foot on the scale of justice. Just look at the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Uh, President Biden called him a white supremacist. MSNBC, CNN were calling him a racist, and yet he was found totally innocent. The media is playing a twisted, dangerous game. They really should be focused on the low bail on why that Mr. Brooks got out. That's where the focus of national attention should be so we don't see this kind of horrendous activity again. Yeah, Jackie, do you think the media is treating Daryl E. Brooks more sympathetically than they treated Kyle Rittenhouse? I want you to listen to how Don Lemon referred to him. What the right is saying about Kyle Rittenhouse is that, well, the government didn't do its job, so it took a 17-year-old kid to come in and do what was right. That's vigilantism. That's not what people are not supposed to be vigilantes. We're not supposed to be taking um, justice into our own hands. Imagine if every single person in America did that. I want to get your thoughts on that. Well, as a media consultant and a two-time Emmy-nominated television producer myself, I can say that this is uh, incredulous because, you know, some of the uh, mainstream media also, you know, was accused of doctoring the photos of Daryl Lee Brooks, just like they did of Joe Rogan when they were put, uh, criticizing Joe Rogan for using the ivermectin. They made him look a little bit more green and sick. Uh, than a, a normal photo of him. They doctored the photo here. And then also, again, with the languaging, you know, that the car uh, killed these people. It reminds me of the shooting in Santa Fe um, that is under investigation with Alec Baldwin, where the gun discharged. Not that Alec Baldwin was, you know, shot somebody, that the gun discharged. And that's what they're saying here, as if the car, uh, that Daryl Lee Brooks it was is non-player in the car situation, and I, I agree with Tom that we should be looking at why he um, was let out of jail early to begin with. Uh, Amy, I've got about ten seconds for you. Your response to CNN's tweet. Sure. Well, it's word manipulation at its finest, and it's also um, lying by omission. They are purposefully leaving out uh, verbiage uh, and. So that way it fits their narrative. And, and that's a lie. A, a lie is a lie, I think, still by omission. Amy Tarkani, and we appreciate it. Tom Borelli, Jackie Jordan, thank you so much for joining us. A new hour of National Report starts right now.